Hello, 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 hello. Today we're diving into a bit of a plans labyrinth, but it's crucial if you're planning on expanding your home. So let's get to the chase. Do you need planning permission for a single story extension? Mm, not necessarily. Yep, you heard me right. You can actually add extensions without jumping through the flaming sword filled, cat filled hoops of planning permission if you use something that's called permitted development rights. But of course, there are a few hurdles here as well, because why would anything be simple? Let's break them down. First up, what's the deal with permitted development rights? These rights allow you to extend your home without the need for a full planning permission, so long as you stick to certain rules. It's a little bit like playing a board game, stay within the lines and you won't get set back to the start. Plus, you can still build some pretty impressive extensions within these rules. However, and there is a big however, these rights don't apply to every property. If you live in a flat, a maisonette, a listed building, or in a conservation area, or an area of outstanding natural beauty, then you're fresh out of luck. Permitted development rights won't cover you. Sorry, life's dealt you a bad hand. Even if you're all set with your permitted development rights, it's a smart move to get a lawful development certificate. This piece of paper proves your project was legit when you built it. It's like having a receipt for your sanity when you sell your house in the future. So what are the actual rules for building within your permitted development rights? Let's get into the nitty gritty sand in your pants for single story extensions. First, size matters. Your extension can't exceed 50% of the land around your original property. And by original, I mean how the house stood on July the 1st, 1948, or when it was built if it's newer. Any previous extension count against your limit. Next, height restrictions, like a roller coaster. The eaves and ridge height can't be higher than the existing house. No skyscrapers in your backyard, folks. Material match, that's the next one. Your materials must be in a similar appearance to your existing house. No futuristic glass cubes if you're rocking a Victorian steampunk vibe. No extras either. Your extension can't include things like verandas, balconies, chimneys, or flues, so you have to keep it simple. For side extensions, they must be single story, no higher than four meters, and not wider than half the width of the original house. Again, original house being how it stood in July the 1st, 1948. For rear extensions, they can't project more than three meters for semi-detached or terraced houses and four meters for detached houses. And don't forget the height and ease restrictions. You got that? If you're thinking about a wraparound extension, which combines the side and the rear extensions, then you're also out of luck. These aren't really covered by permitted developer rights due to their complexity. Ish. Think of it as trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It's just not worth it. If you do want to go just a bit bigger, a bit meatier, you can use a process called prior approval to extend up to six meters for semi-detached or terrace houses and eight meters for detached houses. This process allows your neighbors to voice their concerns if your extension affects their privacy or light. Basically, it's like asking your neighbors if you can borrow their sugar, but for a huge building project. Before you get too excited, there are a few other things to consider. Building regulations are separate from planning permission and cover the safety and structure of your build. Think of them as the health inspector for your house. Party wall agreements, if you share a wall with a neighbor, you'll need to get their written consent before starting. It's negotiating a peace treaty over bricks and mortar. Planning a home extension can be like walking across your kitchen when you've just shattered a glass. It's a bit of a minefield, but armed with the right information, you can make it through without shards of glass in your foot. If you're unsure, it's always a good idea to chat with an expert. All right, that's it for today's video. If you did find it helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and drop any questions you have in the comments. We'll be happy to talk you through them. See you next time.